Hello everyone. Welcome to Voice of the Wild, a weekly podcast initiative by Naturalist Foundation. This is the 10th episode airing on 25th July 2020. With this podcast, we will bring you closer to the world of wildlife conservation, scientific research, and government environmental policies. I am Janhavi Jadhav and with me I have I am Devolina and in the 10th episode we will be talking about many issues and confusions. Firstly, let's talk about how the ever increasing species extinction has reached marine fishes too and many more species could be added to this if appropriate measures aren't taken. Not just that but even dolphin numbers of Chumbal River are dropping. This obviously could lead to many problems of our river ecosystems. Humans directly and indirectly always can be related to such endangerment and extinction just like the accidental death of elephants until recently. Let's talk about one such death in Coimbatore. Human animal conflict is not limited to just that. Due to habitat fragmentation, big cat territory and human civilization are now overlapping leading to many such issues. Such kind of fragmentation not only causes human animal conflict but even leads to genetic disorders in the wildlife it might seem fascinating but is it really as good lastly we need to talk about some record breaking tiger census reports of 2018 so without further delay let's get started the smooth hangfish is the first marine bony fish to go extinct in modern times for centuries human believed ocean was so vast that it was impossible to do it measurable harm But now we know human activities can destroy critical marine habitats, dangerously pollute seawater, and make sea environments more acidic. Overharvesting has disrupted food chains and directly pushed many ocean species into the critically endangered category, and has driven some animals, including stellar sea cow, into total extinction. In past few days this year. Smooth hand fish officially became the first modern day marine fish to be declared extinct. Hand fish are a family of 14 unusual bottom dwelling species related to deep sea angler fish. Unlike most other fishes, they do not have a larval phase and do not move around very much as adults. These traits make them sensitive to environmental changes according to Graham Edgar, a marine ecologist at the University of Tasmania. They spend most of their time sitting on the seabed with an occasional flap for a few meters if they are disturbed. Edgar says, as they lack a larval stage, they are unable to disperse to new locations, and consequently, handfish population are very localized and vulnerable to threats. In 1996, he adds, another species called the spotted handfish was the first marine fish listed as the critically endangered. on the international union for conservation of nature iucn red list the smooth handfish was once common enough to be one of the first fish species described by european explorers in australia now none of has been reported in well over a century despite frequent scientific sampling in its known range Red list guidelines officially define extinct as meaning there is no reasonable doubt that the last individual has died. Edgar and the members of Australia's National Handfish Recovery Team were forced to that conclusion earlier this year, and the red list placed it in the extinct category. Scientists are unsure exactly what finished off the species. but others in the region are threatened by trawl fishing pollution and climate change edgar says additionally marine fish species may already be extinct as well although scientists cannot yet make the call many more are critically endangered it might be hard to imagine why a little organism occupying a small niche in a place few humans ever visit might be important but it's an enzyme from an extremophile microbe that's been used in tests to diagnose covid-19 right now says Katie Matthews chief scientist for the non-profit organization group oceana biodiversity matters even if you can't see it with your own eyes 
Ideally, this news will be a sad wake-up call. Some remaining species of handfish are endangered, Matthew says. But with smart action, we can mitigate those threats. Well, with the topic of threats, extinction and endangered species, the next news is about the decreasing population of the dolphins in Chambal River. Dolphins are one of the most intelligent aquatic mammals that are found in our world. Several species of dolphins reside in India. There are several spots around India where you can come across this friendly animal. Dolphins are one of the oldest creatures in the world along with some species of turtles, crocodiles and sharks. The Ganges River dolphin was officially discovered in 1801. They once lived in the Ganges Brahmaputra Meghna and Karnapulli Sangu River systems of Nepal, India and Bangladesh. But the species is extinct from most of its early distribution ranges. There are just 68 dolphins left in 435 km long Chambal River Sanctuary, which passes through three states, Madhya Pradesh, Uttar Pradesh and Rajasthan, according to the latest census report of Madhya Pradesh Forest Department. The report came out in the last week of June. According to the census report, dolphins' number in Chambal River has been reduced by 13% in four years. The decreasing trend is continuing from 2016, when there were 78 dolphins. In 2006, the Supreme Court's Central Empowered Committee, CEC, ordered a ban on mining in the sanctuary area to save the flora and fauna of the river. But illegal sand mining and consumption of water is so rampant that it is putting the whole ecosystem of the river in danger, said Jyoti Dandotia, chief scientist of the Deori Garyal Eco Park in Chambal Sanctuary in Morena. The dolphins were spotted for the first time in 1985 in Chambal River near Itawa. That time, the number was more than 110, but poaching reduced the number. Now, poaching is not the main problem, but unfavorable habitat is. Not only dolphins, but the population of Garyals has also been affected, said Jyoti. Principal Chief Conservator of Forest Wildlife, S.K. Mandel said, The decrease in number of dolphins is a matter of concern, but Chambal is a lifeline for three states and the forests of MP, UP and Rajasthan are withdrawing water daily. Similarly, illegal sand mining is rampant in Bhind and Morena in MP and Dholpur in Rajasthan. Forest teams face so many life-threatening attacks while taking actions against illegal sand mafia forest team needs support of the locals, which they don't get. Dolphin is a sensitive animal and we didn't find many studies, so we roped in a team of experts, including scientists of Wildlife Institute of India, to do a research for safeguarding and increasing the population of dolphins in Chambal, he added. Experts raise concerns of the decreasing number of the national aquatic animal. Wildlife Institute of India, Dehradun, scientist Kamar Qureshi, who is doing a research on dolphins in Chambal, said, The maximum carrying capacity of dolphins in Chambal is 125. It's a rare species of dolphins, Platanista gangetica, and has been declared endangered by International Union for Conservation of Nature, IUCN. It requires at least 3 meter depth and 266.4 to 289.67 meter per second flow of water for a sustainable habitat. But perennial problems like illegal extraction of sand from the riverbed and water withdrawal projects in Morena, Dholpur and Kota are disturbing the whole ecosystem of the river and decreasing the water level and flow. It needs to be addressed properly to save the dolphins as well as the karyal, he added. Mr. Qureshi said, with research on what is their favourable environment, we are also doing research to know about their communication system. There is a lot to know about this species. It has rudimentary eyes. From praying to surfing, dolphins do it through ultrasonic sound. Now, the research has come to a halt due to COVID-19. We would resume it once this pandemic is over to know more about dolphins. Another unfortunate event that has taken place during this pandemic is the death of a tusker which took place in Coimbatore. Accidental death of an elephant in Coimbatore, Tamil Nadu a male elephant was found dead at Manal Vail in the Kudalur Forest Range on 17 July 2020. The elephant was about 23 years old 
and his dead body was found in the swamp. According to the post-mortem report, it died because of suffocation. Swamps contain loose sand and can become extremely dangerous during rains. There was a possibility that it was trying to raid the banana and areca nut plantation and got caught in the swamp. According to the forest officials, the plantation was illegal. The elephant that died was among the herd of three elephants of the region known by the forest officials. Though the death of the elephant was purely accidental, there is possibility that the human activity could have been a part of it. The plantation could have attracted the elephant and caused it to get trapped in the swamp. The forest officials have said that they will survey all the possible swamp land in the Gudalu region and will prevent the farmers to grow any plants that might attract the elephants or any other animals. This will prevent further such incidents to take place. Encroachment of humans in the jungles has been increasing. The increase in demand of food causes the farmers to grow more of plants out of their farmlands. As humans, we set boundaries for our understanding. But for animals, there are no such boundaries. Their main aim is to survive and take care of their families and offsprings. Animals are attracted where there are certain types of plantations. And then, invading in the farms situated in their migratory path causes loss of crop, which in turn causes loss in the farmer's income. So the farmers, for their own survival, that is to earn money for the welfare of their family, are taking steps like placing certain poisonous or explosive food so that if any animal tries to destroy their farmlands, they eventually die. Along with increase in urbanization, agricultural land also gets expanded at the expense of natural areas. Because of this, the human-animal conflict is also increasing. We have to find better ways so that this problem does not increase. Find ways where animals as well as humans can coexist and live in harmony. Now talking about the human-animal conflict, there's another recent study done on human leopard conflict in Himalayan ranges. So let's hear about that. With human-animal conflicts being one of the major concerns of scientists and conservationists, various studies have been conducted to reduce the conflicts to benefit locals living next to the forest covers, which in turn will help in protecting wildlife that resides in the forest. A research paper was published by Wildlife Institute of India about human leopard conflicts within multi-use areas in the Himalayas, and it shows how habitat overlap, landscape features, can increase such conflicts. The study was conducted between 2015 to 2018. Due to rapid loss of forest cover because of anthropogenic activities, large carnivores like canids, canis species and felid, panthera species, tend to occupy multi-use landscapes outside protected areas. Animals' low population densities, high energetic resources, Social or solitary hunting strategies and wide-ranging behaviors means they often range their existence beyond nature reserves for access to space and resources to seek out easy prey have resulted in their entry in human-associated habitats. These apex predators are commonly involved in predation of livestock. The risks have increased within different types of landscapes in Himalayan region, comprising of both closed and open habitats such as dense forests, open forest, scrublands, and also non-forest cover. Most of the attacks occurred when the livestock were grazing freely within multi-use areas without supervision of a herder. The researchers studied 857 attacks on livestock in eastern Himalaya, the parts of North Bengal, and 357 attacks in western Himalaya, that is Pori Garhwal district in Uttarakhand, by snow leopards in these three years. According to WII experts, Due to anthropogenic activities, the landscape has become less geographic, and these landscapes are converted into a picture of good forest but several small patches of degraded forests along with villages. This made it difficult for leopards to hunt wild prey of the forest and forced them to look for easier prey like cattle or chicken in human habitations. Leopards have now successfully adapted to human habitations 
which could also lead to more attacks in the future. The animal is not coming out of its habitat, but rather the habitat of humans and leopards are overlapping, said expert Dipanjan Naha. Thus, the conflicts that arise have consequent reactions of local communities towards leopards, like poisoning, shooting, trapping and electrocution of the animal, which in turn affects the ecosystem and unknowingly kills the scavengers, avian predators like Himalayan vultures that feed on the poisoned carcass of the leopards. The results of the study suggest that spreading awareness about high-risk areas, supervising grazing and removing vegetation cover around human settlement that help leopards to hide should be initiated to reduce predation. Human interference has led to many issues with Indian wildlife like habitat fragmentation and degradation, because of which inbreeding is much more common. This leads to genetic abnormalities which might sometimes fascinate us but prove to be harmful for the animal itself. One such example being that of the golden tiger spotted in Kaziranga. So a few weeks ago, everyone on social media was stunned in admiration by the pictures of the tigress Kazi 106F from Kaziranga National Park that quickly went viral as she is described as the world's only golden tiger. She emerged as an internet sensation after the pictures of the tabby were tweeted by the IFS officer Parveen Kaswan. In a recently conducted tiger census by phototrapping method, Kaziranga National Park recorded about 121 tigers. The park holds the proud distinction of being home to the country's highest density of tigers too. And the star tigress was recently sighted after the devastating Assam floods. Reports state the tigress has been captured on the camera multiple times since 2014. In addition to this news, there was one more news about the melanistic tigers found in Odisha Simplipal Tiger Reserve. This region is apparently known as the only habitat for the world to harbor melanistic tigers. There were mixed reactions all over about these reports. Talking about the dilemma here, of course because these news were also celebrated by many as they were delighted with the reports proclaiming the presence of these tigers in our jungles as the nature's miracle. But on the flip side, as stated by the officials and few other expertise, this whole situation is just a tip of the iceberg to some serious problems. And there are some aspects to the story that I would like to clear and make everyone understand. So the question here is what causes this rare gene to occur which gave our tigress the distinctive strawberry or tabby coat? So the biological reason is color aberration. And firstly, we need to understand that all these color variations are not caused because these animals are of a different species. Generally, the yellow skin of the tiger is controlled by a set of agouti genes, while the black stripes are controlled by the tabby genes and their respective alleles. Suppression of both these genes caused the fur coat to be golden in this case of the tigers. And as beautifully unique and aesthetically pleasing these fur coats might look, these genes and coats actually have no apparent use to these animals in the wild. As color aberrations are not common in the forest and are actually caused due to excessive inbreeding. And this is the real problem that not just tigers but many other animals face in the wild. Inbreeding is breeding between close relatives, it might be plants or animals. And if a population keeps repeating this, it leads to homozygosity. That is, the possession of two identical alleles of a particular gene or genes by an individual. A higher frequency of these recessive and deleterious traits in homozygous form in a population can over time result in a phenomena called as the inbreeding depression. And people are unaware of the problems relating to inbreeding within the animal biodiversity. So inbreeding depression is basically referred to as decreased biological fitness of individuals. These deleterious mutations have shown disorders such as strabismus, scoliosis of spine, cleft palates, mental impairment and immunodeficiency which causes impaired defense mechanism to fight infections by bacteria, viruses and fungi. And all of this causes the loss of genetic diversity in these animals. 
because if a species lacks genetic diversity, it may lead to its extinction due to the fact that there are specific gene combinations in all of the animal kingdom. And somewhere, humans are solely responsible for these genetic mutations within these animals. There are specific reasons which need to be addressed. One being habitat loss and fragmentation of the forested areas which creates these deserted populations to breed within their own isolated gene pool. They basically don't have a choice and have to breed among their own fragmented populations and because sometimes there is no contact between two different areas at all. But the problem does not limit here. Tigers with such genetic mutations such as the white royal Bengal tigers are not just found in the wild anymore. But they are also purposefully bred to have the particular coat color in captive conditions. They are bred in captivity in various zoos and sanctuaries with the claim of saving them from extinction and conserving their species. But the goal here sometimes is also money making as people pay more visits to get sightings of these rare individuals. And all this only causes the real conservation effort to go in drain as breeding them only causes mixed match and defective bloodlines as well as the grave issue of species extinction. And shedding light on this particular situation regarding Kazi 106F in a report wildlife expert and research officer Rabindra Sharma said, however the finding of this unique individual is not a cause of celebration but an indication for us to start pondering about better connectivity among the fragmented populations of tigers to prevent one of the serious problems of population decline, that is inbreeding. So under these circumstances such as climate change and habitat destruction, it all leads us to the solution wherein we need to conserve not just the tiger population but also keep in mind to conserve the forest reserve that they live in. As many of these reserves had their own specific genetic diversity as well as which helps the population to adapt to various natural changes too. When comparing the DNA variants of the recent tigers with those killed in the British Raj, there was a surprising difference of 93%, which is a matter of concern. All of this indicates that we do need to look for better conservation efforts, different research and studies done in the field of genetics and animal behavior on both wild and captive population of these flagship species. So whatever diversity we have now remains and is maintained properly so that in future we do not lose our unique national pride, the Royal Bengal Tiger. Recently, on July 12th, India made an achievement by entering the Guinness Book of World Record in the wildlife category. The fourth cycle of the All India Tiger Estimation 2018 entered this world record for using the world's largest camera trap wildlife survey. What is Guinness Book of World Record? As we all know that Guinness Book of World Record is a reference book published annually listing world records both of human achievements and the extremes of the natural world. This record was made by conducting extensive surveys and by setting up different camera traps in 2018. Also, the usual tiger population census was carried out in 2018 itself, which showed a robust growth in the number of tigers, thus indicating a progress in Project Tiger. The country now has an estimated 2,967 tigers as per 2018 census. What are camera traps? Generally. Camera traps are outdoor photographic devices fitted with motion sensors that start recording when an animal passes by. These traps are available with various specifications. How did India make it to the Guinness Book of World Record? As for the report, the camera traps were placed at 26,838 locations across 141 different sites, which surveyed and recorded an effective area of 1,21,000 337 square kilometers. In total, the camera traps captured crores of photographs of wildlife, 76,651 of which were tigers, 51,777 were leopards, the remainder were other native fauna. 
From these photographs, 2,461 individual tigers, excluding the cubs, were identified using stripe pattern recognition software, the Guinness team that announced India's feat added. The team also said that this addition of the tiger census in 2018 and 19 was the most extensive to date in terms of both resource and data accumulation. Welcoming India's accomplishment, Union Environment and Foreign Minister said that they are happy that whatever appropriate measures taken in the area of conservation and environment under the leadership of the PM have been finally validated formally and India has been appreciated for conducting the most comprehensive survey yet. Apart from this, India's 2018 Status of Tigers in India assessment also conducted extensive foot surveys that covered 5,22,996 km of trails. The total area of forest studied was estimated to be around 3,81,200 square km. Talking about the number of tigers, the decrease in their numbers is mainly due to poaching, lenient law and order, poor management policies due to poverty, etc. Recently with the Project Tiger, the tiger population has increased to a great extent. The total count has risen to 2,967 from 2,226 in 2014, an increase of 741 individuals. The credit goes to the Forest Department, which has greatly increased the vigilance and conservation efforts. From 28 in 2006, the number of tiger reserves went up to 50 in 2018, extending protection to the larger number of tigers over the years. Healthy increases in core area populations eventually lead to tiger migrations to areas outside the core. This is why the 2018 census has found tigers in newer areas. As mentioned earlier, one important reason is increased vigilance and also the fact that organized poaching rackets have all been a bit crushed. According to the Wildlife Protection Society of India, there has been no organized poaching by traditional gangs in central Indian landscapes since the year 2013. The increased protection has encouraged the tiger to feed. According to Wildlife Institute of India's director, tigers are fast breeders when conditions are favorable. This understanding and estimating the tiger population was solely because of the periodic census. So why is the tiger census needed? The tiger sits at the peak of the food chain and its conservation is important to ensure the well-being of the forest ecosystem. The tiger estimation exercise includes habitat assessment and prey estimation. Thus, the number reflects the success or failure of conservation efforts. This is an especially important indicator in a fast-growing economy like India, where the pressures of development often run counter to the demands of conservation. Because of these conservation efforts, more than 80% of the world's wild tigers are in India, and thus it's very important to keep track of their numbers. All this explains the reason why India entered the Guinness Book of World Records, and thus it's a pretty positive news. I hope all of you enjoyed this podcast. We will keep posting such content every week. Please like, share and subscribe or follow us to stay updated. Also, please support us on Patreon to show appreciation towards our young team that create and provide such informatic content. Link is mentioned in the description. Thank you and see you next time.